Hey there, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I'd like to show you how to build this modern metal-based dining table without any welding. That's right, stay tuned and I'll show you how to on Modern Builds. If you saw my video from last week, linked right here, it was an aluminum-based coffee table that I didn't weld on. It was a ton of fun and it came out really great, but I wanted to expand on that idea. I wanted to make something bigger, stronger, and just generally beefier. So I came up with this almost mid-century cantilevered base design that uses two and a half inch square aluminum tubing. Now Home Depot only sells up to one inch by one inch tubing, so I had to go to my local metal supplier and pick this up. I had already gone to them before for a couple other projects, but when I found them, literally all I did was Google Metal Suppliers Oklahoma City, because that's where I'm from. And I'm 99% sure if you do the same for your city, you're gonna find a metal supplier because every city or every town has to build things out of metal and where else are they going to get it? This video is going to be split kind of into two parts, the top and the base. So let's get started with the base. The first step to making the base was cutting all of the wood that would be going inside the aluminum tubing. So I moved to my table saw and I ripped two 2x6s in half. Then I could spread some glue out on the two faces and clamp them both up. In hindsight, I could have ripped these pieces closer to their final width, which is two and a quarter inch. That way I wouldn't have to run them through the planer as much once the glue dried. And once the glue had dried, I used my belt sander to clean up one of the faces. That way when I ran it through the planer, I had a clean reference surface and everything would stay flat. I just kept taking away a little bit at a time until it fit into the tubing. Then I rotated it a quarter turn and planed the other two faces. I made sure and flipped it every time, that way the glue seam stayed in the center of the board instead of getting offset. After I cut my four leg pieces a little bit oversized, I got my aluminum tubing without any wood in it, and I cut a 15 degree angle on one of the faces. And I cut these a little bit oversized too, because once I put the wood into the tube, I'll cut it to its final length then. Make sure whenever you're cutting aluminum, you go a lot slower than you would when you're cutting wood. I'm gonna be going through quite a bit of epoxy on this project, so I got these bigger bottles than I normally do, and I'll leave a link to these as well as all of the other materials and supplies for this project in the description of this video, along with the written article, which will also be linked. After I spread out the epoxy on both the inside of the tube and on the leg, I used a mallet to knock it in place. Oh man, I should have ran it through the planer one more time, I think. All right, I ran them back through the planer one pass, so this should be a lot easier. I really only took off about a 64th of an inch, but that was just enough to make it to where I could push it in by hand. In a perfect world, I would still have to hit it in with a mallet, but you can't put the wood back on. That was a lot easier. Hopefully that was tight enough. The leg is a pretty basic 15 degree parallelogram. And from the center of the leg, which is the bottom of the aluminum, it's 15 inches to the bottom of the leg. And from that same point in the center of the leg, it is 15 inches to the top of the aluminum. Hope that makes sense. Overall, it's 30 inches. And while my legs were still individual pieces, I drilled the holes that the brass rods will be going through later. Of course, if you don't have a drill press, you could use a normal drill. This just helps to drill perfectly straight holes. I used two eight foot pieces of the aluminum for this project. The first pretty much has already gotten used up on those leg pieces we've already cut. The second, I went ahead and filled with wood before I cut any pieces out of it. And you can see me rolling the epoxy as I pushed the wood in. That way, every piece had epoxy on the surface. Here, I'm cutting the four diagonal supports that connect to the leg. One side has a 45 degree angle that will connect to the leg itself, the other a 30 degree angle that will connect to the tabletop. Whenever I was designing the table, the one challenge that I saw was how I was gonna connect these two pieces together because it's at this 45 degree angle. While I was at the store, I saw these big screws and they've got this cool star bit head. And I think they're gonna work really well. I'm gonna put one in each joint and then that compounded with all the epoxy should be really strong. But before I can drill my holes, I need to line everything up. And to do that, I clamped this big piece of wood to the front of my workbench that I can rest my leg on. Then I can just slide my support up until it all reaches square. I'm gonna go ahead and eyeball this center line and then I'm gonna transfer it to the face of the leg. After I was able to drill through the aluminum, I slowly tilted my drill until it matched that 45 degree angle I drew. And that's why I marked out all these lines on the top because I can use those to make sure I'm running parallel. I wasn't able to drill all the way through the leg with that first bit, so I bought an 18 inch drill bit, that way I could get all the way through it. And I used a step drill bit to make a recess big enough for the head of the screw to go into. 
I clamped my leg and my stop block to the workbench, but I had no way of clamping the cross piece to my workbench, which caused a problem you're about to see. Whenever I tried to screw everything together, because of the 45 degree angle of the cross piece, it wanted to slide down the leg, as you can see right here. But after that happened, I realized I could screw a stop block to my workbench to hold everything in place. And that worked out pretty well. For the other three, they came out really nice. That was it. The last pieces of aluminum I needed to cut were for my stretchers. After I cut one, I used that to make the mark to cut my second so that they would be perfectly symmetrical. Then I moved to my table saw, which was set to 15 degrees to match the angle of the leg, and I ran that through it. Once again, cut really slow with aluminum. At first, I was kind of bummed out that I had to buy this long drill bit, but I ended up using it about five times in this project, so it was pretty helpful. It's an eighth inch drill bit, if you're curious. Wow, that's strong. Before I could paint the legs, I needed to fill all of those holes and clean up all of my seams, so I used this stuff called Durham's Water Putty, which is a powder that you mix with water until you get this thick peanut butter-like consistency. At first, I was gonna use Bondo, but a jar of that cost about 15 bucks, and this only cost $3. It's super hard, sands pretty well, and dries really fast. It worked really great. After I sanded everything first with 80 grit, then 150, then 220 grit sandpaper, I masked off all of the wood, then painted everything with a flat white spray paint. Whether you want to learn more about starting your own business, taking better photography, or mastering social media marketing, Skillshare has got you covered. As you guys know, at the start of this year, I started using SketchUp to make 3D models of all of my projects. That way I can do more problem solving during the design process and put out better plans. Well, this week I've taken a Skillshare class on SketchUp basics to help me build an environment around the furniture pieces that I'm designing. But don't worry, there's not just SketchUp. If Fusion 360 is your modeling software of choice, there are Skillshare classes on that too, which I plan on taking. Skillshare has literally thousands of classes and premium membership begins at about $10 a month for unlimited access. But for the month of January, Skillshare is offering you guys three months of premium membership for only 99 cents. Now this deal is only good for the month of January, so make sure and follow the link down in the description and take advantage of this offer. It's only 99 cents for three months. That's insane. You can't even get something off the dollar menu for that much. Not to mention Skillshare is just awesome. I've probably taken about six courses in the past couple months that I've had it. It's really great. Thanks Skillshare. While I was at the metal supplier picking up the aluminum, I saw that they carried this 5 8 inch brass rod. And I thought it looked really, really cool and I wanted to use it in this project. And whenever I was designing the legs, I knew that I wanted this cross support, but I didn't know what I wanted up here because I knew I wanted two pieces. That way it would be stronger. My plan initially was to do another piece of aluminum here, but I think it's gonna look really sleek if I use this brass rod. Now I've never cut this stuff before and I'm gonna give it a shot on my miter saw. I've heard that it works, but that you're just supposed to cut really slow. So let's try it out. I made sure and cut this rod really slow. In fact, right here, I'm cutting in real time. You can see just how slow I'm going. And even if this did dull my blade a little bit, it's better than having to buy a whole separate saw to cut the rod. And of course, if you have a hacksaw, you can use that as well, but this will give you a really square cut that you won't have to sand or clean up later, which is important because I've already painted my legs. Once again, I used more epoxy on the brass rods here. That way the leg assembly would have a little bit more lateral stability and it would just hold everything in place. The tabletop is not too complicated. I didn't want it to distract from the base any. So I got two half inch sheets of plywood. I laid the first one down, spread glue across the whole bottom surface with a paint roller. Then I got my second sheet of half inch plywood and threw that down on the first one. I made sure and walked across all of it so that I would knock out as many air bubbles as possible, put down a piece of melamine to help weigh everything down along with my workbench. Then, once it dried, I could cut a new straight edge on it. I set my circular saw to 30 degrees to match the angle of the cross piece that it'll be referencing. The finished dimensions for the table are about three feet by six feet, which is pretty standard for a four to six person table. 
Once it was cut to size, I came back with wood glue to fill in any gaps and clamp them closed. Then I got my block plane to make a chamfer around the edge. I don't know if it's technically a chamfer if I'm making the flat portion of it, but still, you get what I'm going at. Once I sanded the edge and rounded over all the corners, I sanded the top as well up to 220 grit, then I put on three coats of Minwax Polycrylic in a matte finish. I drew a few reference lines on the bottom of my table to make sure I lined up everything square. Then I pre-drilled three holes on the bottom of each leg. That way I could countersink three screws and hold all the legs in place. And with the legs attached, the table was done. This table is probably my favorite thing that I've built to date. The design is pretty unique and I haven't seen a ton of things that look like it and all of the angles are really interesting. Plus, it's something I wouldn't have been able to do had I not learned SketchUp, which is really a testament to learning new things and expanding your possibilities. And I should say, if you plan on building this project yourself, make sure and check out the written article for more info. So when we look back at the No Weld coffee table base, you can see that it's strong and it's perfectly stable enough for a coffee table, but if a dining table wobbled as much as that did when you really pushed on it, I wouldn't be happy with it. But this thing is strong. It has virtually no side to side wobble, whether that's lengthwise or widthwise, and everything just looks really beefy and really cool. Like I mentioned in my Skillshare sponsor read, I made a 3D model for this, and I probably wouldn't have been able to build this if I hadn't been learning SketchUp, because there's a lot of measurements going on here and a lot of angles that I'm just really not smart enough to figure out without the help of a computer. And what's really awesome is I had Chris Salamone from Four Eyes Furniture, who is also in my podcast, The Modern Maker Podcast, hop on a Google Hangout with me and teach me SketchUp well enough to be able to build this. And we actually filmed a video out of it. And as soon as that's live, I'll put the link to it right here once I finish editing it. That video is going to go on my second channel titled Mike from Modern Builds, which is going to be completely Patreon funded. And I'm launching my Patreon once I hit 500,000 subscribers, which is either gonna be now or in the next couple days. The plan right now is for there to be no sponsors, no brands that I'm held liable to, which means it's gonna be a really cool community hub. If I wanna make a really long video where I'm talking directly to you guys, I can do that and I don't have to worry about the views being relatively low compared to the rest of my videos and affecting analytics. On the day that everything launches, I'm gonna be posting an official launch video on my main channel that'll talk about my video posting schedule, video ideas, and segments that we might do. I wanna hear what kind of ideas you guys have for the new channel channel and I want to throw out my ideas and hear what you guys think about them. That's all I'm going to talk about the Patreon for now. If you want to hear more, I will link the official video once it's live as well. Heck, I'll even put a card there too. I'm putting a lot of cards up this week. If you're somebody that really hates Patreon or is just totally against the idea, that's totally fine. I'm not asking for your support. I'm asking for the people that are interested in being involved. I'm absolutely never gonna put anything behind a paywall on my channel, meaning you're never gonna have to pay for a video, you're never gonna have to pay for plans or anything like that. The idea is that hopefully there's a big enough community that I'm able to make with this Patreon that I'll be able to continue to do all of this for free, start the second channel, have all of that for everyone. Nothing's exclusive here. If you have any questions about this project, make sure and leave a comment below. I'll do my best to answer as many as possible. And if I happen to miss yours, if you've got a really important question, you can always hit me up on Instagram. A DM is a really quick way to get in touch with me, plus I can keep track of what we've talked about before. If you're new to my channel, I'd welcome you to subscribe. That way you can stay updated every time I post a new project video, which is every week. And if you wanna watch a couple more of my videos, I will link them right here. And guys, I just wanna give a really huge thank you. I'm coming up on 500,000 subscribers. That's a half a million people that have clicked the subscribe button. I could not appreciate that more. And it's kinda of hard to express all of that without sounding all mushy gushy. But I just wanna say thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. You guys have given me an opportunity to do something really, really special and I appreciate it. So thank you, have a great rest of your week and we'll see you next time on Modern Builds.